last episode, I was not particularly kind to the marksman role in the context of how it is usually played. So in this episode of Squad Better, we're going to give this kid some love. Seven of the eight available Vanilla Squad factions have marksman kits that can be chosen, the exception being Canadian Armed Forces. If you are interested in how the marksman role is typically used within modern military doctrine, keep watching. Welcome to the Squad Better series. An eccentric collection of immersively over-the-top background information aimed at furthering your enjoyment of squad. Generally speaking, in modern military doctrine there is a pretty big difference between a designated marksman and a sniper. Designated marksmen are riflemen with a rifle design for longer range engagements or incredibly precise engagements at moderate ranges. They are an integral part of a modern fire team of soldiers and are never expected to operate independently away from the main force. Designated marksmen lay down accurate support fire at valuable targets as per tactical necessity, thus extending the reach of the fire team. They don't go off alone and engage the enemy at half a mile away with a bolt action rifle while wearing a ghillie suit. The biggest misinterpretation about designated marksmen is that they are snipers. The confusion often comes from the rifles they carry, their use of magnified optics, and of common sniper accessories like bipods. Snipers are specialized troops who usually work alone or in very small teams with independent mission objectives. Snipers are often tasked with responsibilities other than delivering precise long-range fire, such as conducting reconnaissance, battle damage assessment, and spotting for coordinates and corrections for artillery fire and airstrikes. A sniper is a specialised job, it operates outside the normal chain of command, usually for intelligence. A designated marksman is a guy in the infantry company who is a better shot than his mates and is usually given a rifle that allows them to work with their line unit and also reach out a little further. Sniper philosophy is usually one shot, one kill. Designated marksmen are whatever it takes to get the enemy down. They are typically happy to shoot an enemy in the foot or put 10 shots at a doorway the bad guys are running to. The purpose of a sniper is to take out specific targets and relocate. The purpose of a designated marksman is to support and move with their unit. A marksman in the US Army is referred to as a Squad Designated Marksman or SDM. The example shown here of a SDM attempting to operate alone far away from other friendly elements is never the case. Similar to that of marksmen in armies around the world, he should instead be providing precision fire support to his assigned unit, who as it turns out are currently on a mission to rescue the crew of an ambushed Abrams that stumbled upon an enemy firebase. The situation looks grim after losing their supporting Bradley in the initial engagement to multiple elevated AT positions. The squad now heavily suppressed is in desperate need of accurate support fire. If only their designated marksman wasn't laying incapacitated one and a half kilometers away. The engagement range in the super highly realistic example scenario just depicted was around 170 meters. I would like to point out that as a dedicated marksman, it is not always about making long shots. 
At close to moderate ranges, the higher powered optics and accurized rifle the DM carries equate to a more efficient infantry squad. This is true because hitting a human target that's hiding behind cover, returning fire and moving can be difficult with iron sights, a red dot or lower powered prism optic. A designated marksman, however, can zoom into the fight to see threats clearly, as well as any opportunity to engage. Now let's take a quick look at the history of the designated marksmen. Although referred to as snipers in Soviet doctrine, the Soviet Union and its allies after World War II employed specially equipped and trained sharpshooting soldiers at a section and platoon level to increase the range of their section to 1,000 metres. This is commonly accepted as the first example of what came to be known as a designated marksman as opposed to a true sniper. After 1963, these soldiers were usually equipped with the Dragonov SVD rifle. The SVD shares all the characteristics typical of a designated marksman rifle. Chambered for a standard military rifle cartridge, semi-automatic fire and a telescopic sight. In the United States, British and Australian armed forces, the designated marksman existed previously, but became both more common and more specialised during and after Afghanistan, where the open terrain revealed the weakness of the NATO 5.56mm round at ranges over 300 metres. So, get a sniper, you may think. Problem was that snipers had become so specialised that they were not particularly useful at ranges less than 700 metres. A gap existed that needed filling. To fill that gap, designated members of rifle squads were given specialist rifles to enable them to engage targets with accuracy at longer ranges than their team members. In some cases, this was the same service rifle outfitted with a different scope, but in most modern cases, they are now given a completely different weapon. Travis Pike, former Marine machine gunner who served with the 2nd Battalion and 2nd Marines for five years wrote, during a deployment to Afghanistan, we were getting engaged from distances as long as 600 yards and had to fight our way forward to be effective. This made our designated marksman, with his 12 power optic, extremely valuable at the beginning of engagements. Our designated marksman could use his rifle to not only provide effective fire, but also to direct machine gun and grenade launch fire more effectively. Travis also wrote, from a video game shooter standpoint, that may sound a lot like being a sniper, but within the organisational framework of the military, a designated marksman is more infantryman. It is now time for the stars of the show. The Designated Marksman Rifles of Squad The Soviet-era SVD Dragonov is used by militia and insurgents. Designed by Evgeny Dragonov, it entered service in 1963. The primary design includes a skeletonized wooden stock and stamped steel tank capacity magazine. The SVD was intended to be a squad support weapon that allowed a Soviet rifle squad to extend its range to a thousand meters. As such, it needed a full-powered rifle caliber. The Soviets already had piles of 7.62 by 54 mm rimmed rounds sitting around from World War II, and they had continued using it in medium machine guns, so it made sense to chamber the SVD in this proven, powerful and plentiful cartridge. The 24.4 inch barrel makes use of that powerful caliber and guarantees it reaches peak velocity before leaving the barrel. The heavy hitting round is comfortable to the shoulder via the gas operated semi-automatic action and the fact the Dragonov weighs 9.48 pounds unloaded. The SVD uses a short stroke piston that only moves a fraction of an inch and gives the bolt carrier a sharp blow, imparting enough momentum to drive it back and initiate a reloading cycle. It is not a compact weapon and clearing rooms with a 48.2 inch long gun is not an easy task by any means. The rifle utilizes a detachable box magazine that holds 10 rounds. That is a low capacity, but it allows the shooter to get tight to the ground in a prone position. Notice that the magazine extends as far as the pistol grip. Any further and the operator's prone position would need to be higher. Aiming, a PSO-1 telescopic sight is provided. This is secured to the left-hand side of the receiver and has a magnification of 4x24, featuring a metal body made from a magnesium alloy and a battery-powered red illuminated reticle. The PSO-1 was introduced on the 3rd of July 1963 together with the Dragonov. 
PSO1 sight picture in squad at 100 meter range is shown in comparison versus the 1P29 optic riflemen get and the largest magnification optic in use on squad's DMR, the 8X 1P88 attached to the SVDM. Note that the magnification is identical between militia and insurgent marksmen and scope riflemen. The reticle pattern of the PSO1 features a bullet drop compensator and stadiometric range finder. The zero of the PSO1 can be adjusted in squad. The SVD Dragunov is an iconic and prolific weapon still in use throughout many conflicts worldwide. The SVDM is used by Russian ground forces and is an all modern evolution of the classic Soviet era SVD. It is a direct offshoot of the more recent SVDS used by airborne troops requiring a more compact, lightweight solution. And as such has a folding stock and a mount for a folding bipod. The SVDM continues in chambering 7.62 by 54mm rim around and has enhanced accuracy due to a heavy duty barrel assembly. The rifle has a Picatinny rail which runs over the full length of the weapon's upper receiver for the mounting of various optics. The 1P88 telescopic sight is standard for daytime operations and is the optic in use on this rifle in squad. At 8X it has the highest magnification of all optics attached to designated marksman rifles currently in the game and is only available on the SVDM. The SVDM ended service with Russian forces in June 2018. It has been actively used by Russia in their ongoing invasion of neighbouring Ukraine, who in turn have been refilled in captured SVDMs. The G3 SV-1 is an accurized sharpshooter rifle introduced in 1972 by German company Heckler & Koch. The SG stands for sharpshooting rifle. The G3 SG-1 started out as a regular G3A3 battle rifle, handpicked for accuracy. The lengthened handguard has an integrated bipod, a special trigger group, cheek piece, heavy dual stage buffer, and Zeiss Dye of REDA telescopic sight with claw mount were fitted to transform it into the G3 SG-1. In squad, this rifle is fitted with the Zeiss Dye of RE ZM telescopic sight. The optic is fixed at six times, with a minimal reticle pattern. The zero can be adjusted from 100 to 1000 meters in 100 meter increments. The G3 SG-1 fires the 7.62 by 51mm NATO round from a 20 round magazine. It is mostly used as a semi-automatic marksman rifle. The level of accuracy is much debated. The service records indicate it was sufficiently accurate to serve as a sniper rifle at shorter distances and it reportedly functions well as a marksman rifle at ranges beyond 500 meters. two different designated marksman rifles used by British Armed Forces and Squad. The first is the L86A2, a modernization of the much criticized mid-1980s L85 and L86 units that proved to be unreliable and unsuitable for harsh combat conditions. Classified as a fire support weapon for squad level engagements, the L86A2 makes use of the same 5.56 by 45mm NATO cartridge as the L85A2 and operates from the same gas system. The weapon was fielded with a bipod and a longer, heavier barrel for greater accuracy and muzzle velocity. It is capable of semi-automatic or full automatic fire. The 30 round detachable box magazine is low capacity for a section automatic weapon especially when compared to the FN Mini-Me, which ultimately filled the light support weapon role. With a high level of accuracy in semi-automatic mode, the primary use of the L86 shifted to that of a designated marksman rifle. The SUSAT optic retained as standard on the L86A2 does not provide particularly impressive magnification. 
Prior to being withdrawn from service in 2019, the L-86 was replaced in its designated marksman role by the L-129A1 sharpshooter rifle. In 2009, Lewis Machine and Tool Company was contracted to supply this rifle to the British Ministry of Defence to meet its urgent operational requirement for immediate deployment of a semi-automatic 7.62 NATO calibre sharpshooter rifle in Afghanistan. The L129A1 was issued at the section level in the British Army, with one soldier in eight carrying the rifle. Three soldiers per section would be trained on the rifle should they need to take over its operation. The moderately high weight of the gun and the good field of view of the optic contribute to making the L129A1 well suited to rapid follow-up shots, a key performance characteristic in the designated marksman rifle role. The SOP mod style stock is supported by a tubular base and extends to a fully moulded shoulder support. The stock is adjustable to six preset positions. Firing involves a tried and true direct gas impingement system common to other firearms of this class and is fed by a 20 round straight detachable box magazine. The 16 inch stainless steel free floating barrel protrudes from the vented fore end shroud and is capped by a muzzle compensator. The barrel is fully removable in the field and can be changed as needed. The rifle is issued in British service and in squad with a Trigicon 6 power ACOG. This ACOG is fitted with a Picatinny rail and while not featured in squad is mounted with a Trigicon ruggedized miniature reflex sight for CQB use. The reticle pattern of this ACOG features a bullet drop compensator with horizontal stadia lines for quick target range acquisition and engagement. Effective use is simply a case of matching the shoulder width of the target to one of the horizontal stadia lines and you are already in the correct position to open fire. The weakness of the SUSAT optic in squad versus the 6X ACOG and the 4X LDS optic scope rifleman get should be taken into consideration when selecting a British Armed Forces kit. The L129A1 proved very popular with British troops in Iraq and Afghanistan, being one of the highest rated weapons used by troops. It's one of the only urgent operational request weapons from Iraq and Afghanistan that has outlived its temporary nature and has gone on to be an integral part of the British rifle squad.
It is, with a great deal of national bias, my absolute pleasure to introduce the HK417, the designated marksman rifle of the Australian Defence Force. Designed and developed by Heckler & Co in the 1990s, it entered service in 2005. In 2010, the Australian Defence Force procured $1.6 million worth of HK417 rifles. The variant used by the Australian Marksman in Squad is the 16-inch Recon variant. Other variants available had a 12-inch and 20-inch barrel, all of which were user-changeable in the field. The HK417 is a gas-operated, modular-designed selective fire weapon using a short-stroke gas piston located above the barrel that operates the seven-lug rotating bolt which sits in a bolt carrier and operates in a forged alloy receiver resembling those of the stoner-designed AR-10, AR-15 and M16 rifles. Its internal design is almost the same as the smaller NATO caliber HK416 although the receiver and working parts are enlarged to suit the 7.62 by 51 mm cartridge. The early HK417 prototype used 20 round magazines from the G3 rifle family, which did not feature a bolt hold open device. Later prototypes, however, switched to a polymer magazine with bolt hold open. In squad, it comes with a 20 round detachable box magazine. Due to its long range and good accuracy, the HK417 fits well into the designated marksman role and comes with the same Trigicon 6X ACOG in use on the L129A1 sharpshooter rifle. Fitted with four Picatinny rails and a free float handguard as standard, in squad this battle rifle features a bipod and foregrip, and although not implemented, it is interesting to note it also can accept a modified 40mm grenade launcher clamped directly to the bottom rail. The HK417 was introduced in the version 2.15 update of Squad, and while I rarely play Marksman, this weapon is a personal favourite. The M110 semi-automatic sniper system was developed by Knight's Armament Company from the SR-25 and was adopted by the US military following the 2005 US Army semi-automatic sniper rifle competition which the Knight's Armament Company rifle won. In 2008, US Army soldiers from Task Force Fury in Afghanistan were the first in a combat zone to receive the M110. The troops rated the weapon very highly, noting the quality of the weapon and its semi-automatic capabilities compared to the Bolt Action M24. Outwardly, the M110 follows the well-accepted lines of the long-running AR-10, AR-15 and M16 family of automatic weapons. The fixed stock is plastic to reduce weight and integrate it into the receiver. A heavily perforated handguard runs ahead of the receiver and shrouds most of the barrel. The muzzle is capped by a slotted flash suppressor with support for an optional sound suppressor. The receiver, handguard and heat shield all feature lengths of Picatinny rail which allows various accessories to suit operator needs. In its standard configuration, the M110 was fitted with a 3.5 to 10x variable scope which is fixed at 6x in squad and a folding bipod under the gas cylinder. It was announced in April 2016 that the M110 was to be replaced by the competing Heckler & Co compact semi-automatic sniper system. The primary reason cited by the US Army was the need for a more compact, shorter, reliable and lighter platform for use by designated marksmen.
the United States Marine Corps faction designated Marksman Rifle that is going to be released on the 22nd of June, with the squad version 3.0 update is not included in this ranking. I might get around to doing a video on it once I have had a chance to research the rifle and assess its performance in game. In the meantime, I have given the SVDM top spot. It has the best magnification on its optic and squad at 8x, and along the same train of thought with its Nerf SUSAT optic and smaller 5.56 caliber, I have placed the L86A2 last, even though it doesn't take up an AT slot. The historically cool SVD has a nice reticle picture with its stadiometric rangefinder and adjustable zero but nonetheless it comes in second last due to its smaller capacity magazine, 4x scope magnification and unwieldy length. The Australian, British, United States and Middle Eastern Alliance designated marksman rifles all have 6x magnification scopes in squad and it is worth noting slightly more accurate in game compared to the SVDM. While you cannot zero the HK417 or L129A1 in game, I am a big fan of the ACOG reticle pattern for quick target and range acquisition. I placed the HK417 at second because it has the foregrip and is shorter and thus more versatile than the L129A1. The M110 comes in fourth spot and the G3SG1 in fifth. The latter, because while its minimal reticle pattern may appeal to some, I find it lacking in additional utility. Before finishing up, I'd like to address the question posed in this video's title Are all marksmen noobs? Clearly, in modern militaries, the designated marksman is a powerful force multiplier at the squad level. They are not noobs, indeed they are better trained and equipped than standard riflemen. However, in the context of squad, the marksman role is most definitely a noob magnet, with the vast majority of players who select the kit not realising, and often not caring, they are taking up a valuable anti-armour slot in their squads. Compounding on top of this is the additional utility a scoped rifleman gives in the form of being able to supply ammunition to his squad members. The fact that scope riflemen get a 4 times optic on rifles that are capable of full automatic fire and have higher capacity magazines make the choice of marksman kits that have the same or worse magnification hard to fathom. The cherry on top of the noob marksman Sunday is the way they play the role which typically involves living out some lone wolf sniper fantasy on the opposite side of the map to their squad. It is a game after all, and if you want to play marksman you should, however consider what is best for your teammates, move with your squad and be prepared to change your kit if asked by your squad leader, as they have the right to remove you from their squad if you fail to comply. Any discussion detailing information helpful to new players would be awesome, and I encourage doing so in the comments section of this video. If you found any of this useful or mildly entertaining then tap the subscribe, like and bell icon. I also hope you will share this video with other players who you meet who are new to this game so they can also squad better.